Welcome. It's the Brand Crafted Social Club Build Better Events Workshop. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach, and this is a meeting that is out of necessity because this meeting is something that we all have to live with. We have to make events happen still because we can't get into face-to-face -face contact just yet. Now, maybe that'll change in the next six months. So if you're planning an event from scratch right now, maybe you can go ahead and roll the dice and get together in person. But for the foreseeable future, the next few months or so, uh, we are all going to have to uh, participate over a virtual platform. So I just wanted to get some of the best and brightest together and kind of just find out you know, what's working with virtual events, webinars, virtual conferences, coffee meetings, happy hours. And uh, we're going to try and do just a real discussion. Sometimes the Idea Collective events are very, um, you know, host interview kind of thing. I want to have just kind of a discussion tonight and hear what you're seeing and what's working and what's not working. One other thing before I introduce my co-host, uh, I do want to like put some guide rails around the conversation. Because if we say, hey, virtual events, I mean, we could have a four-day conversation about virtual events. The two things I want to focus on, just to get your mind thinking about it, are how do you get people to sign up? So like what kind of marketing campaigns have you seen that work to get people into events? And how do you make them feel like they receive value from the event? because we've all gone to events where you've seen someone talk into a webcam for 45 minutes and you log off and you're like, well, that was a waste of time. They're like, why did I do that? I mean, that never happens with idea collective events, but the other, I'm just kidding. So those are the two things that we're talking about, how to get people to sign up and how to make people feel like they got value out of the event. So the reason why I set that stuff up is so we can have a little bit of a framework in which to talk to. And when we're talking about how do we get people to sign up, I'm really excited about my co-host tonight because she's in Queensland, Australia. She's a member of the Idea Collective. She is the managing director for eWomen Network International. She's also a social media genius. Bron Watson joins us. Hi, Bron. How are you? Good morning, everybody. How are you? We're doing great. I'm great. We're glad yes. to have you. So you're in a camper. Tell us why you're in a camper. I am. Well, um, I think we've been on the road now for nearly seven weeks and we've got another four to go. Why now? That's a good question. We bought this uh, 22 foot home um, earlier this year and um, we had five boys and we just decided to take the younger two out of school. And you know what? Our business is mobile. Our team are already um, in their different locations already around Australia and in, in, uh, internationally. So I've just been working from this little box and uh, it's been interesting, let me tell you. <laughs> what I thought would be easy wasn't easy and then what I thought would be hard has been easy. So it's been an interesting time. So yes, so um, I am the owner of Bron & Co. It's a collaboration it stands for and uh, we are an organic social media business and we work with people to get the right message to the right people at the right time. And uh, thanks for having me, Pat. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. You've been a member of the collective since like day two. And it's I have. great to have you. So it's nice that we can schedule something at night so everyone can learn from you because I know you got a lot uh, to share. So we want to make sure we have an open conversation. And I know a lot of you have some great stuff you want to jump in on things you've seen with virtual events. So just like we do the other events, drop into the chat and I'll make sure that we bring you on. And of course, uh, I want to make sure I recognize JB, the showrunner, who came in at uh, right after we started. So hi, JB, thanks for coming. I'm making you the co-host with the most so you can help us direct traffic. All right, so Bron, let's talk about virtual events, right? They're everywhere. Everyone's trying mm -hmm. to do them. Is this the point where you kind of take stock of your social media standing? Like, do I actually have an audience that will come see an event if I put one on? Or how should we be thinking about holding a virtual event in, in relations to our social media audience? Well, that's a really good question. Look, I personally think that if you are in a business that you can run events, do it. And just because everyone else is doing it, that's great, but just do it differently. And it, all right, we all have a unique point of view, but it's about making sure that in an instant, your audience knows that. And uh, do not underestimate your, con your connections. Um, this is where the organic stuff comes in, especially with events. I fill events all, uh, at least three a month, every month without fail. And um, 
you know, some better than others, might I add, Pat, but um, it's, it's never too late. It's, you know, like Tony Robbins has just run his five-day event. I was talking to Lisa Leibman-Wang, who works with him, and she's an eWomen Network member last week. They ran a full thing, a full event for Tony, and, like, amazing. Okay, yes, you need a full production team, and, yes, engagement would have been huge. And But they've tested it now. And um, I, I think that if, if anyone wants to run an event, absolutely. It doesn't matter where your social standing is. I think it's more about how you connect collaborate network um, and if you're not doing those things get on it especially if you're wanting people to help drive your event one of the things i heard you say and i want to make sure i'm understanding you correctly and by the way if we have questions or you want to jump in with your observations this is designed to be a discussion amongst us all but one of the things i heard you say is that the very first thing you said was almost to have like a clear point of view like what is the event about like before even telling anyone about it why is this different than all the others is that one of the key premises absolutely the goal of the event what's the outcome what are these people going to walk away with and it's got to be super super specific um and the other thing of course is lead, what, what what in marketing or in events which i've done for gazillions it's about the lead time don't they think you can, ah, oh, I'm going to do an event in three weeks time and pull it off. Um, if you have a, an engaged audience, yep, you could probably pull it off. But if you haven't, um, it's really important to warm up that market, warm up. People got to know who you are. People got to, I mean, the whole know you like you trust you. It's, it's, it's been around forever, but it, it is never true. More true than now, especially showing up online because that's when the engagement comes. Otherwise, You'll be on your own if you just put up an event and expect people to see it because they won't. <laughs> so uh, how far out do you think you would be safe to plan? If you're going to put on a major event, how far would you recommend a client go? For a major, of, say a summit, like for something that runs for days? Yeah, maybe oh, a day. Six months minimum. A wow. long time. Okay. Because you've got to warm everyone up. You've got to get yourself published. You've got to get yourself seen. And, and that takes time um, to, even when you do pull in all the connections that you do have. Mm -hmm. That's for a major a summit. But the other thing that I would suggest, and, and guys on the screen here, jump in, is getting people to show up, if you're not Tony Robbins, <laughs> to two and three days mm -hmm. is a huge ask. Can it be delivered in a way that your idle customer would prefer it to be delivered? All right. Does that make sense? So to me, it's like we want to, like in education, you you want to do what's flipped learning. So I've got a master's in education, which is like why, but anyway, I do. <laughs> and what that taught me was, is that we want to give people bite-sized chunks. Even when there's an event that's more than say an hour or two, you want to, you want to bring in comfort breaks. You want to bring in space. Mm -hmm. And if you're running a three-day full event with a nut, you know, you see them all the time. You see events all the time where there's 30, 40 events. You know, you've got to be prepared for that. Like um, I'm part of Social Media Examiner Society. They, they run events, but I know a couple of months out that it's coming. Right. And I'm a warm client, so I'm, yeah, I want to hear their stuff. So when you were saying planning six months out for a multi-day event, the most uh, mm. aggressive head nod I got was Liz Watson, who's still nodding her head. All right, Liz, yes, does that sound exactly. right? Exactly. Because to Bronze Point, it's not just getting your audience engaged; it's all the stuff behind the scenes, right? Depending on how you're going to do it, creating the appropriate plans and getting everything up and running and tested um, behind the scenes, whether it's how you're going to run the meeting or if you're going to provide materials before or during the meeting. Yeah, I agree with the at least a six month time frame. Yeah, I, I just was sort of didn't want to freak everyone out. <laughs> um, oh, that, freak. No, do, do freak. Please do freak. It's, so. it's, it, that's if it's in a major event, right? If it's just a more of a, I don't know, 15, 20 is what you're wanting. You know, um, if you're not experienced, okay, I reckon at least six to eight weeks. But it's like, you know, for me, I could put up an event and I'll fill it in a couple of weeks, but I know what I'm doing there. So this is where we collaborate, right? Pat's into collaboration. I'm into collaboration. That's why my whole brand is about collaborating, which is where we connect with everyone on this screen. So if you are running an event, get people like us behind it because it doesn't matter whether I'm in Australia and you're in Milwaukee or wherever you are, 
Facebook still loves engagement, doesn't where do you come from? That's true. So that's just one, you know, LinkedIn's even better, but yeah, going to Facebook. Jennifer Hensley, uh, you've done so much with events. You've shared a lot of stuff with events. Let's not, can we all agree for a moment? Let's talk about those events that are not the six month out multi-day <laughs> Tony Robbins events. Cause I don't think a lot of us are doing that. So let's talk about maybe an event that we want to have and we want to get 50 to 60 people there. You want to sell some tickets or whatever you want to do. But like, Jennifer, if we were starting one of those events from scratch, what are some of the best practices that you're seeing about, oh, and I actually muted you now, you unmuted you, you're muted now. Um, what, what are some of the ways that you would go about building an audience to get people to come? Um, well, I think it's definitely understanding, you know, starting off with, I always talk with my clients too about like what their goals are of what are we trying to do and who's understanding really your audience and do you have like, what would you speak about that they would care about? You know, like we got to kind of start there and setting the stage to then figure out like how we're going to attract them. Um, and I think a lot of what I'm hearing, which um, for a lot of smaller business owners, I think makes sense is how can you leverage other people's virtual stages? You know, um, if you're part of an organization, I mean, I did a presentation with Wibic recently, so it made it really easy that all the logistics and the invitations and everything, I didn't have to do all of that. So I think for a lot of people too, if you can plug into something that's already there, I mean, you can help in terms of that messaging, but you don't have to coordinate all the logistics or during the meeting, I mean, it was terrific because they even had somebody monitoring the, the chat and things like that that could help. So I didn't have to worry about that versus, you know, now I'm doing something directly myself and um, trying to hit multi-channels too of, you know, you know, people, everybody's on social, so you can't like ignore it. Um, but then how can you also reach people directly through email or word of mouth when you're in calls with people starting to tee it up and talk about it? So I think there's multiple different approaches depending on especially like, what are you trying to get out of it? Uh, that's really good. And let me tell you, when you have someone that's running the show behind the scenes, it's invaluable. Only if they're as good as Jennifer Buchholz. Mm -hmm. You got to be that good. Uh, but Bron, it's tried and true to touch on what Jennifer's talking about. If you're going to have an event, and like Michael's saying, you're designing the outcome before you start, the next thing is, who's the biggest deal I can get to come? Because that's going to help me drive an audience. Is that, that standard, right? Yeah, well, the thing is, right, um, don't underestimate that people know people know people. Yes, it's great to get a good, a big name or someone who's well known, but what if you can't, right? So I'd, I'd, I'd hate for people to think, well, I don't know anyone. Who am I going to get to come? It's like, well, cool. How can you collaborate and how can you create something that's punchy with a couple of people, you know, that, you know, um, who can, like you and I, Pat, we just hit off each other, like in terms of conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's, it's that similar thing is don't underestimate that people know people know people because you don't know who I know. So if you just go, oh, you know, Bronze Australia, she hasn't helped me here in Milwaukee. Um, it's like, well, you don't know who I know. Right. Because I know a lot of people, <laughs> you know. So it's, and I have this saying, it's called, but from Mother Teresa, it's be faithful to the small and the big will come. And I think is for those of us who are in small business or even who are in more, who are in larger organisations is, the, the it's the connection but when I say connection it's about utilizing or asking ask the people who are around you who do you know I'm looking for someone and this is again what Jennifer was saying when you know exactly who your ideal customer is and what's the outcome what are they going to get for it and if you're the speaker and and you're wanting to sell sell tickets to your next course or your program all right so you've got to they're going to want to if you're selling tickets for you guess what you're the one up the front <laughs> Yep. You know, that's something uh, yeah. I, I don't see enough people ask for help. I don't see people Ooh. leveraging their network, networks as much as they can. Uh, Roger had a question for you, uh, Bron. Roger, go ahead. Hi, Bron. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what oh, kind of lovely to meet you. Love, good to meet you. Uh, what kind, do you have any um, uh, tools or templates or anything that you can advise for pulling something like this together? Look, you know what? I was talking to another managing director yesterday. Her name is Terry Lynn Yankee, and um, she yeah. has a checklist. Do you yeah. know Terry Lynn? Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the link. I'll send you the link. She's okay. got a link, and she's also given me half a dozen blogs that she's written around events and whether it be on, you know, 
face-to-face or online, um, mm. the way that you fill an event in actual fact is no different, to be honest. It's yep. just the way it's yeah. delivered has changed. Um, so I can get you that. I, I mean, I, I've got heat. I've got heaps of stuff. You tell me what you want and I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ron. Because uh, that, that, that puts Michael out of the running right now. <laughs> well, uh, Terry is uh, the managing director for Madison, which is about an hour from here. So we get a chance to see her uh, quite frequently in Milwaukee, but she put that up on the brand crafted board. So it'd be great to have that shared. Um, a question from Dan. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, I guess one of the scariest things about putting on an online event is uh, power losses or network interruptions or uninvited win- Windows updates, which we actually saw today. So what, what kind of contingency planning do you do for those types of events? Look, I think it's all in, for me, I think it's all in the pre-frame or in the, I, I actually, for when I run any event, I have handed everything that I'm going to present um, including the run sheet, everything to um, some to my to the, my people, so to speak, and it just means that if you fall off the face of the earth, they can pick up. They know exactly what you want to do while you sort yourself out. Because obviously, um, you know, I've been travelling for seven weeks, so I have had hit and miss internet, Wi-Fi around the traps, and that's actually been one of my biggest challenges, especially running events. <laughs> um, that's one thing, and also you can build that into, you know, as part of the lead up. If there's unexpected blah, 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 expect blah, 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 blah. You know, so that means that people are prepared. Um, I believe in, in meeting expectations, but you've got to set the expectations to meet them. Otherwise people will just have whatever they want. But if you set them in that, I call it the pre-work. So it's like the, the work that all the emails and the systems that are in place prior to the event. So obviously this is not just for a, a smaller event. This is obviously, as Pat said, for something 50, 60 plus people, they just know. Then they know what to expect if something happens. We're going to do this, we're going to do this. And of course, if you've got someone who's backing you up and knows exactly what you're doing, they can manage that. Because I have fallen off a Zoom before. Oh, and it's and the- I was host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just the worst. And you feel so incompetent because your internet connection went down. Like you had anything to do with it. Bill Gates is trying to like, ruin like my the life. Nice, like the night Pat lost power yeah. on yeah. Whatever, whatever the heck we were running that thing. What are you going to do, right? Yeah. Or, or, the day, or the day you, you lock your studio and uh, literally two minutes before the event starts and you lock yourself out of your studio and you can't get back in. <laughs> and I grab a brick. <laughs> that happened to you? I did that. That happened oh, to me no. in, in July. So I, Jeff, and I'm, 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 it was, it wasn't pleasant. Can I put it that way? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. HR has left the building. It's okay. Um, uh, Jennifer brings up something that I want to get back to in just one second, but before we go to, because she's got a pretty intriguing uh, thought on structure and format that I think might help it be really engaging. But before we move on to how do we, because I think that falls into the idea of how do we make sure it's worth something if people actually attend. I want to just open up the floor for a second. What have you seen people do that made you go, oh, I want to go to that event? Like, let's make a list of things that we've seen other people do that made us, that made us intrigued, that made us think, I bet that thing is going to be good. And you may think they're obvious, but it might be obvious to you, might not be obvious to me, or what ideas, what have you seen? Just go ahead and unmute yourself and just jump in if you have something that you've seen someone do that made you want to make that event a priority. When part of the preparation for the event is questions in advance, and I can tell that the questions they're asking are going to show up, the content, the result of that that pre-event survey, I can tell that they're using it to inform the design. It's like, okay, at the very least you're asking, and hopefully that means you're also actually going to incorporate needs, requests, questions, whatever. You're engaging with the audience in advance. I'm confident that the the content result is going to be something that I care about because I've had a chance to contribute to the not to the design, but to, you know, informing the delivery at least. Oh, that's really good. And Susie adds a clear agenda. Agree with that. Great, great questions in advance designs a clear agenda. Do you want to, you want to add more to that, Susie, that you've seen? Yeah, I just, I hate it when you don't have an end time. So you have no idea when, how long you're going to be on this call. So it's important to just put the structure up in advance so people can prepare for it. Well, we'll stick to that time too. <laughs> Yeah. What was that, Brian? You want to stick, stick to, to it? Yeah, and stick to the time. Stick to the, if you're on for two hours, 
you stay in your time unless you know you ask permission but you give people bless and release please leave if you need to <laughs> bless and release can we put that on the quote board that's amazing jb what were you going to add no, I was actually going to say, like, we should really consider other best practices for some of those events and, like, be ready to end two to three minutes early, not push up to time to give them their whole value. Because everybody needs coffee and a restroom break and a, a donut or whatever that is. And, like, that last two minutes of value sometimes was, like, the stretch. Yeah. Let them go. No. <laughs> I got to go yep. to the bathroom. It's over. Let me go. And walk off while they're still clapping. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, you added a few things into the chat. What, what have you seen that made people want you to attend the event? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing first off is when you get that per personal invitation, people are like, hey, I'm speaking at this, can you attend? Or I think this is gonna be really valuable. Have you participated in it? That always goes a long way still. But then otherwise, I think a lot of things that I see are those things that are, and what I've heard feedback on things too, is just like, it's very, it feels very tangible. You know, you're gonna get something that's not just theory, but an actual mm -hmm. takeaway that something that you could do something with. And I've even seen some that are giving something in advance that you can already download or see like, hey, this has an action plan. I kind of know to I think what Susie was saying a little bit more like, what am I going to walk away with at the end of this um, are a couple things that that I've found that seem to get more people involved on the front end. Yeah. I want to make sure that we get everybody in here. So Jamie and, and Ted and Megan, uh, Dan, if you see some stuff here, I know that Max, you've been adding some great stuff into the chat. Uh, what have you seen out there that has made you intrigued to want to attend an event? So well, I just put in the chat, I can talk about this too. I, I've used kind of similar criteria for attending online events they do for in-person events. If it's directly relevant mm -hmm. to me, what I'm trying to do it's, it's like, you know, I'm trying to go out and like advance in my career. So if it's like, if I see something I related to quality improvement, like that's something that drives my interest. I think there was like a webinar that there was some person that ran a few months ago. It was, I think it was something related to quality improvement in COVID. So that kind of drove my interest, right? I know there's like another event coming up with the Madison Freelancers Group in Madison. They're doing something on how to have, look at options for multiple revenue streams, how to create multiple revenue streams for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's a topic that, I, it would be relevant for me and I'd be interested in learning more about, so I'm checking that out. So yeah, I, I think that's somewhere with a lot of people too. It's like if, if an event is relevant to what people's goals and interests are, they'll be interested regardless of whether the event is online or in person. And I think it's easy to say that you're relevant if you can boil it down to what's the one or two unique things that you're going to do back to what Bron said before, which is, okay, we're doing an event about marketing, not specific enough, like yeah. what nope. part and what's the big benefit? What's the takeaway? I mean, we really got to drill down and that will help people extract, extract the value. We've got some good stuff in the chat here. Roger, can you share the stuff that you were uh, putting in there with uh, Michael about other, like you said, you use quizzes. What are you using for quizzes? Um, uh, a mimeograph machine and that blue ink. Remember that stuff? Mm. And oh, the then, <laughs> oh, right, right. You remember that? You like go in the room and you're like, Do they oh, make please, candles of that? Do they make candles make, of mimeograph? I know. Please make, please. Make, yeah. Oh, exactly. Mimeograph. Yeah, we could do that. Um, I use a product called Mentimeter and it's similar oh. to um, Poll Everywhere, but uh, Mentimeter does live polling. So at the beginning of an event, I give them a QR code or a uh, six uh, digit code and people can throughout the event I pull up a question and we get live responses to to the events uh, to the questions so it, things come up in bar chart pie chart word clouds um, long answer short answer um, I've used it uh, to, to ask a number of questions and every time I've done it uh, since March people have just really really loved yeah. the uh, interaction uh, and one of the things that I enjoy is that I enjoy um, responding right on the spot to what I'm seeing, you know, being able to riff on what's coming up on the screen or uh, have some fun with it, you know, depending on what they put in, you know, because I'll put in like, uh, what, what is the best thing that happened to you so far today, you know, for one of my uh, positivity uh, talks. And uh, it's really neat to see what comes up. That's great. Now, can you, can Ron, you preset you those, Roger? Oh, sorry. Pat. What do you mean preset? I'm you sorry, Bron. Oh, what, what kind of preset? Oh, what I'm saying is the, the questions in the polls, are you able to set that up prior to the event or does it have to be done during the event? Always. I always do it prior to the event. And then yep. it links yeah, that's right, what I was wondering. Yeah, exactly. And then it links right into either Keynote or PowerPoint. Uh, oh, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really fun uh, to see that go on. So before we get off of this, what 
made you want to attend an event. I want to make sure that we're hearing from folks if they have something to add. Consuela, Sam, Ariel, Jamie, and what have you seen that made you go, I'm going to that event? I would add for me, a recent one I went to uh, that was virtual, it was the knowing who the panelists and the speakers were going to be in advance. Mm -hmm. So not only kind of the agenda, but then who was going to represent that to know is that right, the right target audience that, you know, I want to learn from mm -hmm. or either connect with. What about the folks in the crowd, Liz? Does that make sense to you if you were saying, oh, look who's going to be there, this person and this person and this person, even oh. if they're not speaking? Yeah, so here's a cool thing for an event that I was just attended um, through Green Biz. When you signed up for the event, so they did all the right stuff ahead of time. Here's the exact agenda, what we're going to cover, tons of topics. Then when you signed up, you could introduce yourself, right? Write up something to say who you are and share that. And then you could connect with people in advance of the event, oh, nice. like through LinkedIn. So it was great. I made some connections before we even got there and realized, yeah, these are the right people that I want to be building relationships with. Oh, that's so you're right. It's both the, the panelists and speakers, but also the folks who are going to be there just taking it all in. And what I found also wanting to collaborate with all the other attendees. Yeah. That's brilliant. So how did they, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so I was just going to ask you, Liz, and did they drive you to, did they encourage you to connect on LinkedIn? Like how did they, what did they use? Was it a tool or what sort of process did they use to get you to, to connect with other attendees? Um, they were using, I believe the platform is Hopin. So when you signed up, you could kind of yep. write your bio and then you could add you know, your LinkedIn, pro how, really, nice. however you wanted to connect to people. Nice. Um, and the majority like were, were through LinkedIn. But yeah, so they gave you both options, an intro and then um, a way to uh, share a link of how you'd want to connect. And then throughout the event, as it went on, we were able to chat the entire time. And the attendees realized, wow, we've probably been able to connect with more people. Mm -hmm. This way, instead of waiting for the breaks to go outside the room and chat with people, um, where you could at least um, share your contact information and then you could click on their name and chat and say, hey, I think we should chat offline. I'm going to go connect with you on LinkedIn and let's, let's have a coffee. Um, so it was really an effective platform for that. So nice. do you remember in the first Star Wars where they had the tractor beam and the ships getting sucked in? That's like what's going on with me and Hop In right now. Like I've signed up for Hop In. It's just sucking me in. Michael Rampola, you're a Hop In bro, right? I mean, oh, I've yeah. Been oh, yeah. I'm well versed. I'm, I'm a vet at this point. Very vet. Very vet. And by the way, uh, Jennifer Buchholz, did you get the Mentimeter uh, software there to start petting? Have you played with that before? Because that's uh, that sounds like something that's right up your alley. So Roger and I have our very first one-on-one -on -one scheduled for this week, and trust me, it's on my list. So give up the goods. Let's hear. Oh, you know what? What I love that you said there is that it's our very first. Oh. That that there may be uh, more. The love, Consuela, Ariel, Jamie, anything that you've seen that people have done that made you go, "Oh, I want to go to that." Sam, it's uh, what do you guys got? Amy? For me, yeah. a chance to win a book. That's always like. <laughs> I want to go to that. Free stuff, uh, free stuff. Free stuff. Uh, but seriously, um, my most recent one, Tony Robbins, was going to be there. So, yeah, I want to go see that. And then um, anything that I feel like I need to learn more about, so I'm actually going to get training, and I don't feel like they're going to sell me something, those are the yeah. ones I want to go you know, someone mentioned in the chat uh, getting hammered by all the speakers after the fact and how lame that is, right? You get 20 follow-ups. And that happened, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, Ariel, you were going to say something. What have you seen? Yeah, one thing that uh, pulled me in, I don't join a lot of virtual events, so you should be honored, Pat. Um, <laughs> I am honored. I, every time you come in the little box here, I think, oh, I have really need it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, I don't join a lot of virtual events, so I'm actually surprised there was one or two that pulled me in in this time. And one of them was uh, from Entree Leadership, and I listened to their podcast, so I already have a little bit of trust there, but I don't usually join their virtual events. But I had one come through um, my email, and it was about uh, it was about marketing. But it was it, they said we're going to give you this structure, and they kind of give a visual of the structure, and so they were going to explain it. 
and how you can apply that with real tangible and actionable workshop style, kind of the do it as you learn it. And that really brought, pulled me in because there was a visual. I'm like, oh, I want to know more. And they said, if I show up, I'm going to get value within the time that I'm there. So I know it's going to be time well spent. That was one that I really, and I, I did feel it was valuable. And Bron, with all the social media stuff that you train on and teach, do you do workshop style stuff like that? Is that a good experience for the host? And do people get a lot of like build it with me kind of workshop stuff? Mm, I, I used to run half day events um, pre-COVID and I, I tested the um, process. Like I've, I've got a workshop a new one that I was running and I thought oh well, I'll just do it online so I actually called it an, a workshop series so instead of asking people to come and hang out with me for half a day um, I did I actually presented it over a month so I had a, a, a teaching session so to speak and yeah. but um, I'm, I'm a little bit different to other people because um, it's all good well to teach someone but if you don't show, show someone or walk with someone so the implementation side of it um, I have a bit of a problem with that. So I would, I, I gave an hour, I gave them the things that I mentioned, the tools, the resources, the checklists, and then throughout the week followed up with a Facebook group. Um, I had a hot seat. So if anyone had any questions, they could just come on my hot seat. It was a Facebook live hot seat. So it was easy for me to manage. Yeah. Um, and I, I doubled the price on my workshop and I still, and I ran it over a month, but it was the same as what I was doing face to face. And did they get similar or better results over a month rather than face to face? I thought it was better. Better because I was able to, hey, here's, learn this thing here, then go and implement it into your business, then bring it back to me and go, hey, Bron, what do you think of this? And I'll go, excellent, we're on the money, or no, or hey, what do you think about that? And then, so it meant that we could, you know, if you're thinking about it as, you, as you're learning something new, especially in social, like there's, you can research how to use. And remembering, guys, I, I, I focus just on organic. That's my thing. I do organic social media. So it was about learn this thing, go and put it into your business, bring it back to me and go, hey, how did you go? Before yep. we got went into the next week. And uh, it worked a treat. That's good. And I doubled the price. So <laughs> Yeah. Woo. Um, that kind of sets up something that's available inside Idea Collective. The, when we teach courses inside there, it has that community style. You can put out several lessons and then it has all of the topics and the message boards inside of it. So you can have a little community taking the course and talking and workshopping together. So it's kind of a cool tool if anyone wants to test it. Um, let's, let's turn our attention. Well, before we do that, let me ask you one last thing, Bron, before we move on. Is there anything that you've seen people do to get people to sign up for an event that maybe we haven't touched on yet? Any final thoughts on that particular side of the house we're talking about here? The only thing I've seen, which I feel offers value, um, because it's not valuable unless it's a solution for someone, right? So what I've seen is that you see um, interviews, you see lives, you see the speakers, you hear from them, and they're already you're already getting to know them, and you're already getting to think, wow, look what they're doing here. So in that lead up, that like we spoke about at the beginning, you start building in there people getting to see that speaker, which, you know, obviously if you're Tony Robbins, you don't have to, right? You just say, hi, I'm Tony Robbins and voila. But, you know, but their teams work very hard to, to run those events, you know? So, but what I'm saying for us is connect with your speakers, connect with your audience. Do you see what I'm saying is, and you're bringing people together prior to the event and it doesn't matter where you want to run them whether you want to, in, how you want to invite it, because it's all about going, hey, come and meet Pat. He's going to be speaking here. I can see you've got a ticket. We're going to, we're going to, you know, hear some more of Pat beforehand. So it's to me, I call it the sticky stuff, that pre-work, the front end uh, information and value that you offer before someone even turns up. Because by the time they turn up, they're just going to go, wow, this is, this is great. And that's where you'll improve the engagement because you've got people who really want to be there. That's amazing. That's, I mean, that's really sending off lights in my head. So Cost you nothing. Yeah. Just saying. Right. No, <laughs> and, and then when they show up, they're better connected, like many of the people have mentioned, which is fantastic. And, 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 and use hop in and, and Mentimeter. I got to think those, you, get, you know, just, when you're bringing it that, you're just starting to bring that stuff together. Hello. Yep. 
we're going to we're going to be running better events than than any of the face to face ones. That's right. That's right. And that, you know what, I have to at least uh, bring this up. So Michael, I want you to explore what Bron was just talking about, because it's a perfect transition into how do people get value out of the event? You had shared a thought that it's not about replacing live events. It's about doing virtual events and doing only things that can happen virtually. And that is a great reframing. Talk about that for a little bit, because I thought that was brilliant. Thanks. And um, Brian, great to meet you. Glad to connect. Um, thanks for being here. First time caller, long time something or other. Um, so uh, real quick, I've been doing this for, I've when we were about two months into this effort, right? I realized I'm like, why do I feel like I am like the, you know, the, the only guy who can see in the land of the blind men. I realized I've been doing this for a decade. And what I learned really quickly, my original trial by fire was don't try to recreate what's live in virtual figure out what you can only do in virtual and do that. And then you're providing a different value. So 100%. this is back when I was in corporate and we said, all right, well, let's not try to recreate live training in virtual. What can we only do this way? So we did a bunch of results of that. So, and then I actually interestingly saw an article that somebody put out about one of the um, U S political conventions that said, the reason it worked is because they didn't try to turn in real life into virtual. They tried to do stuff that you could only do virtual. And I thought that was a great idea. Like you couldn't have somebody, representing their state, standing in their state, highlighting their state, if we'd all been in Milwaukee, for example. Like, that was a unique angle. So, from your experience, what is the value of virtual? What can only be done? What's the power value leverage of the format that we can, that you've seen leveraged well because it's virtual, that really works and it would never work live? Are you talking to me? Sorry, yes. Okay. That was generally for you. But I wasn't sure if it wasn't for Pat or I. I, do, I was listening very carefully. Mostly, mostly for everyone, but specifically for you. Do you know what it is? For you first, at least. I, thank you. Thank you. And it's such a good question. And I couldn't agree with you more around, um, around being that uniqueness. Just make it just for virtual, right? So here we are. I'm in sunny Queensland outside a, a 22-foot box. You're getting to hang, right? I'm getting to hang with you. And Michael, I'm not sure where you are. This is what cannot be done if I was running the event in Sydney. All right? I'd never meet you. I'd never meet Pat. So, for, for example, with eWomen Network, I'm the first country outside of Northern uh, America, right? So, in here in Australia. And we are only online. So, when COVID hit and everything went online, it's like, hey, dudes, we've been doing this anyway. But to me, I feel that what it's done is that it's just opened the opportunity. I ran a call last week. I had someone from India. I had someone from Zambia. I had someone from, was it Montana? Maybe somewhere. No, it was Edmonton, Canada. And then a, and then a guy from South Africa, Cape Town. It wouldn't have happened no. if we didn't use these platforms. So to me, we already knew they were there, right? But what it's done is for the people who are not international speakers, authors, etc., you now have the opportunity to be an international author, speaker, etc., simply by sitting mm. in the comfort of your home, being real, being you. And you, as I said before, you just don't know who knows who. Right. And pants are optional, which is always great. Did I answer Bonus. the question? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think beautifully. <laughs> so I guess, and then, so then I want to just bounce it to the group, which is what have you seen? I'll give a simple example to get it started. What have you seen done because it's virtual that you realize could never work live? My simple example is polling. If I had a group of 100 people in a room, it would be generally difficult for me to get 100 people to give me an answer that I could then scan through, pull a theme out of and give back would never work, right? I'd end up with anecdotes and I'd end up with long forms and you know, get a microphone over to that guy, like yeah. drop all that. And you, you can get more participation, at, at least at volume. Um, and we can do back channel. I mean, Pat, JB and I just ran a call earlier today. We were doing stuff in the background nobody else saw, but it definitely created a better event up front. And that would never have worked had Pat been on stage. It couldn't, I mean, I could have been in his ear, but it would have been hard. It would have been. Could have been, but been awkward. So those are two examples. So what else have other folks seen that, wow, that only works because it was virtual. That was cool. Let's think about that differently. So unmute if you want to add something, I'll add something real quick. One of the things that I like, two things really, 
I think this format can be more democratic because if you go to a networking event and I'll call him out because I love him to pieces. Andy Wines is bombing around. You're not going to be louder or more engaging than Andy Wines because he was just born to network, right? But I can think of one person in particular that's in our network who is an absolute mouse in person. But on Zoom, she's right there and ready to jump in and ready to share yes. thoughts. Like she's a lot more confident because there's no one else here. It's just a computer. So I think it gives everyone a voice if they choose to unmute and talk. That's not a guilt trip, but it is kind of, so make sure you unmute and talk. But it is an opportunity for everyone to jump in and have something to say. That's the other, the other thing that's, the theme that's hitting for me, and it's coming as you ask this question, is if I wasn't connected with Liz, the opportunity to connect with Liz before, during, or after the event is a real connection. When we do business cards, we all know that's a joke. I mean, it's not the same. So it gives me a chance to look up Liz's stuff and learn what she's doing and make a real connection there. So those are two things that come to mind, but I'm going to zip it. Who has something else to add? Something that's better in the virtual environment? Max, oh, go Pat, ahead. That actually reminded me of something. I know sometimes when, you're, when I go to like, events in person, I don't get people's names totally correctly. Whereas when you do these online events, you typically see people's names plastered across the street green. So if you want to connect with people after the events, you know exactly what their name is and it makes connecting with them easier. Yes. And it, I think it helps me remember people's names. Right? Like if I shake hands with Michael Rampola, I'm not going to, well, Michael, I'd remember, but I wouldn't remember, you know, I'm not good with names, but I can stare at someone's picture and name for an hour and it helps me recall that. All right. What else is better virtually than it is in person? Let's say watching you in action, Pat, your ability to call on someone who, you know, is going to be, be able to contribute something relevant to the conversation uh, versus if you're in a room full of people, it's, oh, let me drag you over to the other side of the room, talk to this person and interrupt their conversation that they're having with someone else. Uh, kind of your, the, the ability that you have to be like, oh, you two talk right now because <laughs> you're all here. <laughs> uh, so that connection with the individual person from you, but also to connect to other people or bring in, uh, display their brilliance to the topic. Yeah, that's, you're right. It does give the chance for more people to speak. So Susie, you mentioned breakout rooms. Do you like breakout rooms? You go to an event and everyone gets thrown into their own little room? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It kind of, it depends because I don't know how they're being assigned. Like if you get placed in a, in a group that you've already been with some of those people, then it's kind of awkward and right. you're having to talk to the same people. Um, mm -hmm. So it kind of just depends on, I do like it. It's a good feature. And you can't get that in person. No, you're right. And you can bop around real fast. You can meet a lot more people online than you can in person. Because maybe in person, that guy just won't shut up. Please, let me go. I got to, please. My, <laughs> my wife just called. The house is on fire. I got to go. Well, I, I would say that you can do what we do in breakout rooms in person, right? You can split people out into groups during a workshop and have them meet. But you will have that... Um, the chance of running over on time is a lot greater because trying to get people to go back to their chairs can be a real struggle where in your breakout room, just, you know, click the button and they're all pop back to, to the thing. The other thing I like about the breakout rooms online versus splitting up in groups is in order for the speaker to get to each of the groups, that can take quite a bit of time. But if you're popping into breakout rooms, that's a lot easier to control the time and the time of that overall exercise that you're doing. So. Yes, and I want to add on break. Oh, sorry. So, I was just going to say one thing on polling because you can do polling with a group in person fairly easily. It's called poll everywhere. So when we when we break out and we're not meeting virtually, you can check that out. It's you can like you can make word clouds and everything. Just people just have to text their answer. You don't know who's it's coming in from. Yeah. So, anyways. I was just going to say I did this one. So when we were doing the live events on Hop In. We had a tech rehearsal and at one point somebody was having a problem with their tech and I literally did a little mini tech breakout. I said, okay, guy who can solve the problem in person with the problem, I'm putting you two in a breakout room, go solve your problem and then come back when you're done. And like we could continue rolling on the rest of the rehearsal. Yeah. Like, so don't forget that breakout rooms can also be used when you're not in a breakout room, when you're in a regular meeting. Like you can just throw people into a sidebar chat and hey, when you're done, come on back. Yeah. And that just takes thinking in advance about what are all the tools at my disposal and how do I leverage them? That's so, a great point, Michael, because I use that in trying to plan something else with a group, right? We needed to plan something and realize, yep, we're just splitting it up. Everybody go, you've got so many minutes. 
do the thing you're supposed to do, come right. back and report. Somebody and open a really Google Doc and be ready with a slide. Yeah. Yeah, it was really <laughs> effective. So Tracy, you dropped some stuff into the chat. Uh, what do you like and what's unique in the in or the online version rather than in person? Well, since I like to multitask and um, I find it very beneficial that I can listen to the whole conversation yet have separate conversations going on at the same time with people in chat, which takes that even a step farther is if I find somebody who I find very interesting who I've never met before, I can start a conversation with them on LinkedIn and actually go all the way to scheduling a one-on-one -on -one while still being in that networking event. And that just like, ugh, it's like the main biggest multitasking thing you could ever do. <laughs> Absolutely. You just get so much accomplished in such a short period of time. And it's, it's, um, it just keeps you on your game, I think. Well, and I think that leads to the second half of the conversation as we try and stay on time here is uh, Kim was mentioning that you can meet a lot more people. And if you leave a meeting like this with a one on one, some of you've never met before, that's another way to prove value. We've talked about downloads and takeaways. Those are great ways to prove value. What are some other things that you've seen people do, Bron, or things that you think we could do once the event is over and someone's reflecting, boy, was that worth it or not? What are, what's in it for me as the attendee and what can we do as hosts? Okay, um, it's a good question. I, I run a lot of networking events, as you could imagine. What I get my guys to do, uh, this is pretty basic, take a picture of the screen, um, because yes, you can download the chat, but it comes through as just text only, which is fine. Uh, I agree with Tracy, um, start connecting. Um, but what that means, like to me, right? So I've taken a photo of all you guys, I won't stalk you, relax, it's all good. Um, <laughs> but I might now go onto LinkedIn and go, hey, Roger, fantastic to see you on the call this morning. Just wanted to connect here on LinkedIn. Um, and what I'd say to people is, um, you gotta play the game. I call it playing the game, which is not being facetious. I'm being actually quite serious. Um, and I would say to my people when they come to my events, my goal, my intention for you is that you're gonna meet and connect with five people that you didn't know before. Only five, because I can tell you what happens is we go to events, life takes over. And before you know it, you're going, what? I don't remember. And you've got no idea. So to me, while you're here, mm -hmm. take a picture of the screen, and go and connect on LinkedIn or whatever your preferred platform is. Messenger, you don't need to be friends if you prefer Messenger or however it is. But the set a, set a goal for yourself to say, like, for me, my, my intention is, right, I want to meet five new people because I don't know who knows who. Like, I could be sitting in front of one of you guys and you guys could be the most amazing speaker for my next Accelerated Networking event. You know what I'm saying? Is in, so it's a really small thing um, because I believe the conversations should continue. So if you are hosting a summit, you need to offer an opportunity or a place and there might be some tools. Hopin might be able to continue that conversation. But the, at the end of the day, it's up to the person to play the game. You as a presenter, you as the speaker, you as the attendee, nobody can do the work for you. And it's about thinking, cool, well, I'm going to meet five people today that I didn't know before. And it's not going what's in it. It's not going what's in it for me. This is my, this is a personal bronze thing here now. It's how can I help? Because I bet you I'll know someone who can help you <laughs> because I've got connections everywhere. So it's that kind of small step. I like the idea, and as event organizers, I think I can blend in real quick and other people who are hosting events, this is an idea we've just kind of hatched here and stolen from Bron. Thank you, Bron. Uh, do we have to pay a tariff on an idea from Australia? Are there tariffs in place? I don't just know. Just hook me in, just, just include me. That's all, you know, I'm on the other, uh, my, my hashtag is connecting continents. So, you know, just in, in, include me. <laughs> yes, there's, there's a, a VAT tax. You're right, Michael. Uh, no, yeah, like, that's it. I think we could add into uh, an event, just a screen capture connection moment where, hey, now we're just gonna pause the event for 45 seconds. You put it on Brady Bunch View, screen cap the people that are here, and then, okay, let's start the show. So while we're getting ready for exactly. a show, we do the thing, but be like um, purposeful about it, which I think is, is definitely something as a host we could do. Um, 
and include. We did that for our quarterly events. So we do a quarterly event for our members and the last one we had to go virtual, but we got in advance, we got everybody to give us their home address. We sent everybody a mug. And so we oh, did nice. the, we did a cheers, everybody, you know, cheers with the mug moment. And that was great. Like that was a great visual. It was a, like, let's, let's, cause a big element of our quarterly event is the connection. So we want everybody to have this moment of, you know, like we're all in this together kind of, Hey, thing and it was a big deal like people like those the smiles were super genuine people really appreciate it so i love i love the idea pat of the of the intentional freeze frame and it's leveraging you know, that. I, I, and, and to take that one step for, further at one of my events i we ha, i had a competition and uh you might like this one is that i had a it was a it's a voucher on amazon to buy a favorite book and um but you had to bring a coffee mug so it's exactly the same michael but you had your own coffee mug and we screenshot it. And then from that, I chose the winner to win the voucher. And it's the same thing. If you've got the, and again, it's a freeze frame, but you can then send that as yeah. a post follow up. Thanks everybody for attending. Hey, yes. As promised. Thanks for attending. Da, 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 the winner is, you know, or whatever it is. It's, it's just, um, I think it's, it all is all about the connection and the collaboration. That's yeah. my, my view on that. Uh, it's brilliant. This is really great stuff. All right, we got just a couple of minutes left, but I want to make sure we're going around and we're getting the feedback because this is supposed to be feedback. What else have you seen at great events? Like I went to an event and they did the thing and oh my God, this was fantastic. I'll jump in. Um, I have gone to a few different big events. Um, one was the P5 Summit, which I know some of the other people on here were in. And I thought it was very well done. But one of the things that I think really helped to um, spur anticipation and like feeling of like inclusion was that we actually got like a, a box with some, um, uh, what am I trying to say, books. There was a couple of books in there and then there was some um, like uh, products. That's not the right word, but <laughs> there was like a metal straw and um like a backpack thing in there and that was like that was really cool i think especially with it being um virtual it might have been a vip thing uh jen i'm not sure i just thought you're coming <laughs> but um it might have it might have been a vip thing but it was cool because like we're virtual so we're not connected but it kind of made made you feel a little bit more connected and i know that um there's a friend of mine is doing a women's international day of play and she's sending out boxes too it's going to be virtual of course as well and they'll be getting like candles and part of it's like an exercise thing so there's like a jump rope in there um and then some other like um things so to kind of just make it more personal i guess so i really like that that's good and you said the word connected that's such a great word it's a way we can all be together all right uh a couple of more thoughts here uh and jb sorry you didn't get the vip swag uh other things that you've seen people do that made you go, ah, oh, that was such a great value. That's why I love that event. Any last takeaways? To me, it's anytime you're getting um, worksheets, you know, that we've talked about pre, but anytime you're getting stuff like that, that you know you can use and make it last more than just the event. So things that can, you can help apply what you're learning. Sure. And, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to Susie Moon because uh, with your CRM, you could absolutely do an email campaign after the event, right? Thanks for coming in. Here's value every week for the next couple of weeks. Uh, that should be a purposeful thing um, that we all do because that's a way you can stay close to the people that attended. Um, so, yeah, that really works. All right, Bron, before we wrap up here, is there anything that we haven't covered about that just you believe in your bones, just like this is how you do events online that maybe isn't about getting them there and maybe isn't about driving value after the fact, but just anything else about events that you just believe just in your bones that we need to hear from you? Oh, I think Bron might be frozen. Just excuse you, the guy oh, with the blow behind me. I'm here, you got me, there's a guy with a blob behind me, so just ignore the building site tunes you're hearing as we speak. And I think we covered a lot. I think the main thing is, um, is just do it. Just give it a go, collaborate. And um, everyone has something beautiful and unique to share to their market. And uh, that, that would be my last point there is to do it. And then once you do set it up, follow up, follow up, 
follow-up. And that is also the people who are interested as well on your events. Um, you just keep going back just because someone didn't respond to your message the first time or your email the first time, don't worry about it. You don't know what's going on in their life. Go back, send another message. And then one day they might go bugger off, but if they don't, who knows? They might come along. So um, that would be the thing is just be consistent on that. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Well, one of the things you said earlier, we've got some other questions that people want to talk about here, but you're traveling the continent. So if you need to pop off, go ahead. What did you call it? Grace to, what did you call it? The permission to leave. You didn't say you had a really cute. Lesson release. Lesson release. Lesson release. That's what we just Less, did. Lesson uh, release. So we need to have more events at times <laughs> that you can be here because I absolutely love your contributions. Thank you for giving so much tonight. We really appreciate it. And if you got to go, uh, you got to go. But thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. It's lovely to see you all. And um, yes, because of the Moa man, I might go because I think my internet getting a little unstable as well so thank you thank you guys and yes. pat let's uh we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll see what we can do i love it take care guys i'll see you all online bye bron thanks dear all right bron watson <laughs> she's the e women network international bye -bye in australia uh and she's uh on holiday going all around australia which is incredibly cool all right uh everyone else if you need to go you need to go but i do want to get to two more questions ariel had something quick about um uh, audio for events. What was that, dear? Yes. So I was just curious about if anyone had incorporated music for transitioning modes in their events. Um, when I was doing a promo video for a speaking event I have coming up, uh, I witnessed someone else do a video and they had music in the background. It really changed kind of the feel of the video. So I incorporated background music for my video. And I'm curious about if anyone's used that in an event virtually, because oftentimes in live events, you'll see people use music to kind of intro or something. I see Roger raising his hand already. Um, so I was curious about how that works with the virtual and if there are considerable technology challenges that make it perhaps worth it or not. Roger, you wanna take this one? Yeah, um, I use, uh, I use uh, actually Jennifer, <laughs> you're kind of funny. Uh, I do walk on music uh, for, my, uh, for my stuff and I actually walk on to it um virtually um and uh going uh coming back from breakout rooms uh i've used it um and what i need to start doing is using uh music that i actually have the license to um <laughs> and uh yeah so I, I think ariel if it's the background music you were talking about for the last thing you did i don't know if that was uh licensed or, or not but i've gotten a bunch of uh, uh music that it that that is that that they'll give you the copyright to and use uh but uh, i did follow the rules roger i got i got i'm glad you did i figured you would i kind of figured you were a, a rule That's follower perfect. i figured that um but I, just so if anybody knows i use beatles music but it was b-e-e-t-l-e-s all oh, right thank you just yeah it just sounds like the other group it's way different they're thank you for understanding thing. yeah yeah okay uh so that answers your question ariel let's well, um there's probably more that you're looking for, I think. Ariel. Is, is there more to what you were saying than just the, the music, the transitional music, or was there more to that? More so, what were you thinking about the transitional music and if other people had tried it, um, as well as what technology challenges might come up? But I think that's enough just to, to explore. Again, I'm going to just suggest that you have help with that stuff. So, as the presenter, don't try to be all the things. I agree with that. It's all up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard to do two things at once. So, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, Tracy, you were mentioning in the chat that you uh, promote a lot of events and you're really like the hub, a lot of, especially for small businesses, you do a lot of stuff to lift people up. Uh, and how does that work for you? And, and how, does that help you get more audience to your events when people know that you're a connector and a promoter? I, I think so. Um, I've been re my referrals end up having other people refer back to me and that's been very helpful. Um, but really I just, it just feels really good to be able to help other people find other people. So that's my main motivator. Um, and I know that eventually if I promote enough people to the right places, it'll come back to me or in one way or the other, it's going to benefit me or it's going to benefit them. And either way it works. Win-win so, either way. Yeah. So win-win either way. 
And as we start to wrap up here, before I do, you do so many events and you participate in so many. Is there anything that you think that we've missed that you want to add? And I'm going to open this up to everybody if they have something to add. What have we missed? What else do we want to get on this recording? Anything that's in your head thinking, oh, we should really make sure we talk about the thing? Mm, I don't have any suggestions on that. No, nothing that comes to mind anyways. All right. That's great. Liz, uh, anything that you have to add um, that maybe we haven't covered yet? I don't think so. No. Nope. Lots, okay. lots of good nuggets. All the things that I was thinking about, we covered. Well, here's what you I'll. Add, I know you got to add some music to your entrance gotta, and your exit. There we got to go. add some music, right? We should absolutely <laughs> have music. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Anyone? I'm sorry. Go no, ahead, Consuela. Yeah, I was going to say that we didn't really talk on, on here. We've obviously all seen it when Michael uses his um, whiteboard, but in in um, workshops, depending on what you're covering, a, a whiteboard can be a nice way to have everybody kind of contribute um, to a same idea. Like they can, everybody can write on it. So again, there's nobody staying back, but you can all, and then you can save that and send it on like you would other things. Yeah, it's uh, not, it's like delightfully not high tech too. That's why I like mm -hmm. Michael's whiteboard. Like you can see it and it's not a PowerPoint slide because PowerPoint screws up the camera and like it changes everything. All right, so I'm going to just do 30, 45 more seconds. Any final thoughts? Uh, Jennifer, you've done so much with live events. What have we missed? What would you like to add? Um, a lot of great ideas here. A lot of things I even picked up and everything. The only other thing that kind of came to my mind right now was think about like if you have a signature talk or a signature message where, you know, you might flex it for different audiences, but that's something that you kind of always can kind of build off of and come back to and use in different spaces and just how you connect, I think from that, that heart story to it, you know, of we want all the tactical and the takeaways, but how do we actually bring people in and see that they're, you know, we relate to them and really just connect with them at, at the beginning and the end of our, our presentations as well. Yeah, that's great. Great stuff. Final thoughts, anyone before we sign off? Well, all I can say is thank you so much for giving uh, tonight. Hopefully everyone that's interested in doing events or that's already hosting events picked up a thing or two and like, oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that. I know that uh, I'm going to wear out my email later on tonight with a bunch of stuff that I'm going to do to my event. So that way every idea, uh, idea collective event gets better. Our brand crafted events will get better. And uh, it's definitely uh, thanks to you. And Bron, is she not the coolest? Like, have you guys ever talked with Bron before? She's like one of my favorite people on the planet. I just adore her uh, and you guys as well. So thanks for coming tonight. So uh, with that, we're going to wrap up how to build a better event, the brand crafted event. Uh, up next, we will join each other on Friday. We're getting together for brand crafted coffee Friday morning, free coffee webinar. So come on in and meet some peeps and uh, have a cup of coffee. Cause I, uh, well, I could use a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> so thanks everyone for coming and, and good night. Yeah, Pat. Night everyone.